All right, here we are again, back with another one on lesson 2.3, uh, solving absolute value inequalities. So in the last video, we talked about solving equations, right? Equations, which involve the equal sign. Uh, but inequalities mean less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, right? Uh, and so that's what we're going to be doing. Um, now, solving an absolute value inequality is very much like solving an equation. It's really the same kind of steps, the same general premise, uh, but there's two major differences. One, uh, and this is the thing you want to look out for, um, when you multiply by a negative, I'm not going to write it all out here, but if you multiply by a negative number, that flips the inequality sign. Uh, hopefully you remember that from Algebra 1. Because uh, you do do solving inequalities in Algebra 1. They're basic linear inequalities, right? If I have like x plus 1, or let's say like negative x plus 1, greater than 5, right? I would subtract 1 from both sides, sure. I get negative x is greater than 4. Um, but if I want to figure out what x is, I'm going to divide by a negative 1, right? And so uh, negative x becomes positive x. Positive 4 becomes negative 4. But greater than becomes less than and you have to flip the inequality sign so remember to, when you multiply by a negative you must flip the inequality sign this will get some of you <laughs> i'm letting you know right now right uh it's it's super common students make it all the mis make the mistake all the time it's fine but when you know to look out for it that kind of helps you check your work okay so just try to remember that best you can um as far as why it flips the inequality well, um, if you recall, you know, our function transformations, right? A, F of B times X minus C, blah, 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 right? Do you remember when B is negative, right? If I say like, oh, you know, if I had um, X squared, or maybe, let me choose a better one, uh, square root X, I love that one. If I have a square root X, right, that looks like this. Um, but if I have the square root of negative X, that's a horizontal reflection, and so it looks like this, it goes backwards, right? And that's because what you're doing is you're taking the image of the graph and you're flipping it the other way, right? All the x values that were positive become x values that are negative. And if I made this like, let's say like x minus four, right? Then that might look like one, two, three, four. It might look like something like this, right? But if I wanna flip that the other way, uh, it doesn't look, Right, if, if I want to horizontally reflect that across the y-axis like this, not just flip it around, but if I want to flip it over this axis, then I go one, two, three, four, and then it looks like this. Right, so, so the difference is, one, two, three, four, my image looks like this versus this, right? That's because uh, after moving it to the right four, you reflect it over the x axis, or sorry, over the y axis like this, so it creates a sort of reverse image. So whereas this was x was greater than four, the other one is x is less than negative four, right? And that's why that works. That's why we flip the inequality because when you multiply by a negative when dealing with inequalities, you are flipping over the y axis. And so it, you have to flip the sign. Anyway, I hope that's a sufficient explanation as to why we do that, uh, just in case you were wondering. Because um, sometimes, you know, it's it, you say, ah, we learn all these rules in math. Why do they work, right? Well, that's why. Uh, and the other difference is the check looks different. So the check is different. Uh, and I'm going to put more detailed notes in the note key. Uh, and when we get to the check, we're going to talk about it. But instead of, you know, we would say like, oh, x equals 5 or 6, right? And we would t test those, say, plug in 5, plug in 6. Well, we're not going to really check the numbers we get. We're going to draw a number line, and we're going to check intervals. So we're like, we're going to check this interval, and then we'll check this interval, and we'll check this interval. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like. So the check for extraneous, we still do it, but it looks a little different with inequalities. Okay, so that's our little introduction. Um, real quick, the difference between uh, greater than or equal to versus less than or equal to. 
and so this is just to kind of visualize uh, what the two most common answers are going to look like. So suppose I say absolute value x is greater than uh, or equal to 5. What does that mean, right? Well, if I think about our piecewise definition, um, absolute value x is x and negative x, right? Uh, and so if you test some numbers here, right, I'm going to make a number line because we're going to visualize this. We're going to use a lot of number lines in this uh, lesson. Suppose I take the absolute value of 5, right? That's 5. If I take the absolute value of 6, that's 6. And if you compare these to 5, 5 is greater than or equal to 5 because it's equal. 6 is greater than 5, so that works like this. Right, so is 7. So I'm on this number line here, I'm going to put 0 here. I'm going to put 5 here. I'm going to put negative 5 here because we're going to test that one too. At 5, it works. So imagine this is a point on the graph, right? 5 works, so it's filled in. It's true. 6 works. So 6 is on there, and so is 7. And if you test anything to the right of 5, right, absolute value 8, yeah, that's greater than or equal to 5. So everything is going to work to the right of 5 to satisfy this inequality. And so I'm going to shade it kind of like that with some zigzags there. Now, suppose I try 0, right? Absolute value of 0 is 0. That's less than 5. So that doesn't work. That's not greater than or equal to 5. Remember, that's, that's what I'm analyzing right here. Is it greater than or equal to 5? So 0, no. 1, no. How about negative 1? Also no. And I can test all the numbers in this region, right? 1 and negative 1 and, and 4 and negative 4. Uh, but if I test negative 5, then that's equal to 5, which is greater than or equal to 5. So negative 5 works. And if I test negative 6, well, that's positive 6. And you notice everything's going to work for the negatives because if you take the magnitude of negative numbers less than negative 5, they're all going to be more than positive 5, right? When I said magnitude, I meant the positive values. And so this is what my interval looks like, right? Numbers greater than 5 satisfy this inequality, and numbers less than 5 satisfy this inequality. What does this look like in interval notation, right? What does this look like? Um, or actually, I, I, should have, I was supposed to say inequality first. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. Let's lasso this because that's called the lasso tool. <laughs> uh, and so you'll notice that this is x is less than or equal to negative 5 or x is greater than or equal to 5. So that's one way to say it as inequality notation. But in interval notation, it looks like negative infinity to negative 5 bracket union bracket 5 to infinity. And that's my interval. So this is our, our answers could be expressed either way. Now let's look at absolute value x is less than or equal to 5. And I'll plot another number line like so. And we'll put here's negative 5, here's 0. Uh, and we'll put 5 here as well. Now notice, right, if you pick numbers more than 5, like 6, that's not less than or equal to 5. That's not true, so 6 doesn't work. Uh, in fact, you know what? I'm going to change this from equal to strictly less than, just strictly, not, not equal to. So is 5 less than 5? No. Uh, so 5 is kind of our boundary point here because I know that 5 doesn't work, but I know that like 4.9 does, right? Absolute value of 4.9 is 4.9, and that's less than 5. And anything less than 5 should work. So it's going to shade this direction, right? And I know that's definitely true up to 0. Now, could I try negatives, right? Do I, if, does negative 1 work? Well, negative, absolute value negative 1 is positive 1. That's less than 5. Oh, that works. Absolute value negative 3 is 3, right? Oh, that's less than 5. It works. And so we're going to find that the same image kind of appears on the negative side here where negative 5 is not included, but everything above it, meaning everything more than negative 5, uh, that is less than 5, will work. And so I have this interval, right? So you notice uh, it's, it's two things, right? x is greater than negative 5, but that's not just it. It's also, I say, and x is less than 5. 
It's both. And so another way to write that is uh, x is between 5 and negative 5. And so uh, I'm using these specific words here, or and and, because this is going to be a big deal when working with inequalities, is these words, or and and. You have to consider both options. Okay, and what does this look like as an interval? Well, it's bracket, or sorry, it's parenthesis negative five comma five. We use parentheses because those are not included. Okay, so the important distinction between the words and and or, and means your solutions must satisfy both inequalities. They both have to be true. All right, or means that you can satisfy one of them, which means either of them. As long as one of them works, then the inequality is okay. You'll notice, right? Look, numbers between negative 5 and 5, they satisfy both, right? 0 is both less than 5 and more than negative 5. But notice, look at 6 here. 6 is greater than 5, true, but 6 isn't less than negative 5. So we use an or statement because we only need one of them to be true. So, uh, graphing solutions on a number line. Um, this, this piece here, these four little, these little four squares here, there are four types of answers you're going to get when you deal with inequalities uh, with absolute value functions. And, and really, this probably applies to any function, really. Um, you have and statements and or statements, and you have to carefully consider which word it is. So... Here's the first one, an and statement, where you are sort of between two values. So suppose, like, so here's 5, and here's 7, right? And x is greater than or equal to 5. That means equal means filled in, and greater than means above. So I start shading above. But also, it says and less is, x is less than 7. So it's not equal to 7, so I don't include 7, right? And it must be less than 7, so it's to the left here. That needs to satisfy both, so it can only be between them. Yeah? It's not going to go past 7, because look, if I pick 8, yeah, sure, x is, uh, if 8 is more than 5, right? 8 is more than 5, but it's not less than 7. And the and statement means it needs to be both. So you'll see my interval here is bracket 5 to 7. All I'm doing right now is understanding how the number line relates to inequality notation and interval notation. Now the other one is the OR statement, which is the other one we just saw, right? Suppose I have two numbers. Here's 5, here's 7. 5 is included. Again, 7 is not included. Uh, but less than 5 means to the left of 5, like this, right? Everything less than 5, this direction. More than 7 means everything above 7, this direction. And it's an or statement. So it only needs to satisfy one of them. right? So for example, if I pick 4, well, 4 is less than 5, so that works. Is 4 less than 7? No, it's not. But that doesn't matter because it is less than 5, so it works. Notice 6. Well, is 6 less than or equal to 5? No. Is 6 greater than or, uh, greater than 7 strictly? Uh, no, also. So 6 actually doesn't fit in here, right? 6 is not part of our solution because it doesn't satisfy either. Uh, so it only has to be one or the other, but if it's neither, then it's not included. So this interval is negative infinity to 5 bracket unioned with 7 to infinity. 7 has a parenthesis. Now, those you'll notice both of those answers, right? They look at they look just like what we have up here, just like it. But take a look at the next few ones. So let's look at the next OR statement. So I'm going to draw my number line. Now here's five again, and here's seven. Five is included. Seven is not included. Now it's an OR statement. Greater than five is shade to the right of 5, less than 7 shade to the left of 7. But consider, is 8 included in this set, right? Well, 8 is greater than or equal to 5. So yes, it is. Is 8 less than 7? No, but it's an OR statement. And because it's an OR statement, 8 is included. 
And you can think, well, if 8 is included, then any, anything above 5 is included. In fact, 7 is greater than or equal to 5, right? That's true. 7 is not less than 7, but it is more than 5. So actually, 7 is included. So everything above 5 is included in this set. We include everything. But then look at 4. Well, 4 isn't, right? 4 is not more than 5. That's not true. But 4 is less than 7. So that means it's part of it. And so that means anything less than 5 must be less than 7, must be part of the solution. And you notice, if I take a look at my number line, it looks like I filled in at just about everything, right? Everything is filled in. That means all real numbers, right? Uh, all real numbers. That's what this solution set is. Uh, so uh, one way to write this, right, if you do interval notation, just say negative infinity to positive infinity, you could also say infinite solutions. Infinite solutions because if we're asking, right, if this is the this is the solution set, if it's less greater than five or less than seven, well, it's everything. So there's infinite answers. I could pick anything in that set, and it works. See, so, in the words of Todd Howard, it just works. If anybody knows that reference, okay. Uh, and now I put this here, and I look at the last one. So here's five. And here's 7. So 5 is included, and 7 is not included. But let's analyze this for a second. Suppose x equals 5. If x equals 5, well, yes, 5 is less than 5. True. This is equal to 5, right? It's good. But is 5 less than 7? Well, no, it's not. So actually, notice it's an and statement. It means both must be true. 5 doesn't work. 5 is not included. In fact, you know, 7 might be, so actually 7 is not a good choice, but suppose I choose 8, right? 8 is more than 7, but is 8 less than or equal to 5? No, it's not. And because it's an and statement, 8 doesn't work either. So if I had 8, that doesn't work either. In fact, the whole number line doesn't work. You see, the opposite of infinite solutions, the opposite of all real numbers would be none. It'd be no solutions. And so we would just say no solutions. Uh, and this is a way uh, you could also say uh, the empty set. Empty set, right? As we talked about in the last video. Uh, again, the empty set, this guy, is, right, a, a set is these little brackets here. And you see how I haven't written anything inside there? It's because it's empty. It's because there's nothing in it. There's no solutions. So these are the four answer types we're going to encounter. Um, and so uh, the reason I go through this is because most often your answers are probably going to look like this usually. However, it could look like one of these. It could be infinite solutions or it could be no solutions. And we have to do that check for extraneous to verify and make sure um, which one it is. Okay, so finally we can actually get to solving. That was all just set up, right? That was all just set up on our how to express our answers. Now to actually solve. So you'll notice that the steps for um, solving in absolute value inequalities are largely the same. Isolate, that's the same. Create two cases, that's the same. Solve both inequalities. That's the same. What's different is checking the solution. Uh, we're still, we could still use a calculator. We're still going to plug numbers in, but it's going to look a little different, and I'm going to show you how. So let's do example one here. Solve the inequality given below. Well, just like we said, the first step is to isolate. Right. The first step is to isolate this absolute value expression x minus 4. So step one is isolate. So I'll subtract 3 from both sides uh, just because, right? Um, and I'll say here's 1 half times x minus 4 uh, is less than 7 minus 4, 3 is 4, okay? 
Uh, now I have a coefficient of one half, right? This is one half times uh, x minus four. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. Let's multiply both sides by two. That way, these cancel out, and I get absolute value of x minus four is less than four times two, which is eight. Nice, Not very nice. So I've isolated it, okay? And now I'll move to step two. Uh, in fact, let's use some vertical space here. Step two, two cases. So we're gonna have two cases, positive and negative, right? Just like we did with solving an equation. So here's the positive case, here's the negative case. And uh, the positive case, I remember, I just keep the absolute value sign, I just get, them, get rid of it, it's the same sign, right? It's x minus four is less than eight, nothing changes. It's just taking this guy and deleting the absolute value bars, it stays the same. Because remember, absolute value x minus four is a piecewise function that's gonna split into x minus four and negative x minus four. But if I distribute that negative, that's negative x plus four, right? Uh, and so that's what the other negative side is. That's negative x plus four, because as we flip the signs, is less than eight. And again, uh, I'm keeping it less than eight. That's constant. All that's different is absolute value x minus four becomes x minus four and negative x plus four, right? That's why I create these two cases using the piecewise definition of absolute value. Now, I'll solve both inequalities. I'll add four here. I get x is less than, uh, eight plus four is 12. And then over here, I'll subtract four on both sides. I get negative x is less than uh, four. Now careful here, we're gonna divide by a negative one to make x positive. But when I do that, positive x is no, no longer less than, but greater than negative four, okay? I have to flip that inequality since I divided by a negative. That was one of the differences we talked about. And, you know, you could probably say, oh, well, that's it, right? It's x is less than 12, uh, and x is, less, is greater than or equal to 4. But here's the problem. Is that an and statement? Or is that an or statement? We don't know right? We don't know if it's and both must be true or either could be true, right? And so that's why we have to check for extraneous. So step four, I draw a number line. Number four. I actually love doing this. Step four is to check. I, I really do. I draw a number line. Now, what are the key values I'm testing around, right? Well, I'm testing 12 and negative four. So here's negative four, here's 12. And you'll notice by the uh, sign here, neither are included, right? Uh, if it was included, it would have an equal. Neither are included, so I put an open dot on both of these. So you see, the question is, is it, you know, is it gonna be shaded this way? Uh, because, well, it's x is less than 12. Okay, so x is less than 12 means this way, x greater than 4 means this, right? So it could be an and statement in between, but what if it ends up being an or statement, right? What if it goes on and we get all real numbers? So that's what I really need to check. So uh, to do this check, we just pick any value you like uh, within each interval. Now you see there's three intervals we need to test. We need to test to the left of negative four, we need to test between negative four and 12, and we need to test after 12. So that means we need to pick three x values to examine. So I'm gonna pick uh, x equals negative five. And that's because negative five is just one to the left of negative four. You can pick anything. You can pick negative six, you can pick negative 4.5, you can pick negative 10 million, right? Anything works, but I just pick one to the left because it's easier, right? Uh, and so the inequality we're checking, well, you can either check the original or you can check the isolated case. I think the isolated case is much faster to check 
because you've kind of you've, you've usually simplified the math a little bit. Uh, so let's try x is uh, equals negative 5. Well, if I do that, then the absolute value of negative 5 minus 4, right? Is that less than 8? Question mark. Well, negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9. And the absolute value of negative 9 is positive 9. So uh, do I, is, is 9 less than 8? No, that's not true. So I would say no. Right? No. So x equals negative 5 doesn't work. That means this to the left of negative 4 is not true. That is not part of the interval. We don't like that. And that kind of makes sense considering x. our, our solution says x should be greater than negative 4. And honestly, we probably have enough information now to deduce what the answer is. But you want to be careful, all right? You want to be careful. Okay, uh, let's test another. Let's try x equals, well, let's pick something in between negative 4 and 12. I like 0 because 0 is easy to do math with. So I'll say x equals 0. And so I'll look at absolute value 0 minus 4. Is that less than 8? Question mark. Well, 0 minus 4, that's negative 4. And the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. So is 4 less than 8? Yes. I say yes, it is. So that means anything between, since I've done a sort of check between negative 4 and 12, everything works in between. And I am safe to shade in this region. This is a check. And now I'll check one more. Uh, let's, let's say to the right of 12, let's say 13. And so I'll check x equals 13. Does this work? right? Well, 13 minus 4, is that less than 8? Question mark. Well, 13 minus 4 is 9. And I know that 9 is not less than 8, right? 9 is not less than 8. No. So to the right it does not work. So it is an and statement. Yeah. Therefore, right? Uh, you know what? Let me just because while I'm, I'm right here, I'm gonna lasso this. I'm gonna make it just a little bit smaller. Let's just this is Mr. Spake formatting some stuff here. That's all he's doing. He's just he's just formatting here. That's the check for extraneous. Look at look at that, nice and pretty. Uh, so therefore, this is an and statement, right? If I go back and I look at this side, this is this option. It's an and statement. It's in between two things, right? So x is uh, less than 12 and x is greater than negative 4. Now, there is a better way to write that, right? So uh, my, my answers, I can write. Uh, I don't like that. My answers, if, it's, if it satisfies both, that means x is less than 12 and it's uh, greater than negative 4. That's a, that's a sort of a nicer, cleaner way to write an and statement. And that's inequality notation, right? This is inequality notation. Um, but I could also give interval notation, right? If it's in between negative 4 and 12, then that's parenthesis negative 4 to 12. And that's interval notation, like so. And those... Uh, e, that's two ways to express the same answer. Uh, you may encounter uh, both both writings, yeah, both uh, both ways. Okay, and so that was that's example one worked, and this is probably the point in the class that I would stop talking and hand it over to you to try the second one. But since this is a video, uh, I encourage you to pause the video and try the second one. But I'm just going to go through it anyway here. And I'll do blue now. So let's solve the absolute value inequality, right? First thing we got to do is isolate. Isolate. So I put a bar here. Notice it's negative 4 times this absolute value expression. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. And we want to be really careful here because now we get x plus 9. 
is no longer, right? This, this is going to flip because I've divided by a negative. It's now greater than or equal to uh, negative 25 and negative 4 is a positive 5. So I have two cases, right? Step two, I'm going to make my t-chart like this, positive and negative. So I have x plus 9 is greater than or equal to 5. And again, remember, absolute value x plus 9, it's going to split into two uh, piecewise functions, x plus 9, the positive piece, and negative x plus 9, the negative piece. And if I distribute that negative, it's negative x minus 9. So I flip the signs. Negative x minus 9 is greater than or equal to 5. And now I just solve both of these, right? Minus 9 on both sides. I get x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Let's say add 9 on both sides here. X, negative x is greater than or equal to 14. Uh, and then I'll divide by a negative 1, which means x is less than or equal to negative 14. And so I have that. And so now, right, it's, yet again, it's the question. Is it and or or, right? Is it x is greater than or equal to negative 4 and x is less than or equal to negative 14? Or is it or? And that's what we got to test. So we make a number line, right? Step four. Make our number line. Or I guess we're going to check. Check f of a x plus 9 greater than or equal to 5. And we're going to make a number line like this. And we're going to pick things. So here's negative 14. Here's negative 4. And we're going to just test things in between. So I'll try out negative 15. Let's say x equals negative 15. By the way, these are included, right? This is equal, equal. So I do know that these are filled in dots here, equal and equal. Now if x equals negative 15, uh, let's, uh, let's analyze negative 15 plus 9. Is that less than or equal to, or sorry, oh, greater than. Careful, Mr. Spake. Is that greater than or equal to 5? Well, what's negative 15 plus 9? Uh, is it negative 6? And negative 6 equals positive 6, which is greater than or equal to 5. Yes? True. So negative 15 works. Yes. So that means the left-hand side is shaded. That works. Now let's test something in between, like uh, 0. Oh, no, 0 is not in between. Sorry. How about negative 10? That's in between negative 14 and negative 4. So let's try negative 10. So negative 10 plus 9, is that greater than or equal to 5? Well, negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. Is positive 1 less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to 5? No, it is not. So that does not work. And then one more, we'll try, uh, oh, now we can try 0, because 0 is more than negative 4. So I say x equals 0. Let's try 0 plus 9. Is that more than 5? I think the answer is going to be yes, right? Positive 5 is greater than or equal to 5. Yes. So more than 4 works. And there it is. I've done my check, right? And so now I know, right? Therefore... Uh, this is an or statement, right? It only has to be, it has to be one or the other. It could be less than 14 or it could be more than 4. So I say x is less than or equal to negative 14 or x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And that is inequality, right? That's inequality notation. And then the interval notation would be negative infinity up to negative 14 bracket, unioned with, bracket, negative 4 to infinity. This would be interval notation. And we can box it and feel good about ourselves and feel happy. Yay! Woohoo! Okay, one more for good measure. 
Example three, right? Example three. Now, uh, we're going to start by isolating, right? Step one is to isolate. Sorry, I was checking my phone. Uh, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides here, and I'm going to get absolute value x plus 1 is less than, let's see, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. And so I'll make my two cases. Why is my, why is my pen given out there, huh? Let's see, let's make our, make our two cases. Hey there, Mr. Pen. Okay. Boop. And boop. Positive case, negative case. So x plus 1 is less than negative 3. And then the flip of that is negative x minus 1 is less than negative 3. Uh, we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So x is less than negative 4. Here we'll add 1 to both sides. I get negative x is less than negative 2. Divide by a negative or multiply by a negative. Either one works. x is greater than 2 x is greater than 2. So now I'll make my number line, right? So I'll check for x plus 1 less than negative 3. And I'll make a number line. And we're testing here's negative 4 and here's 2. So we'll just pick some stuff. We'll pick negative 5, we'll pick 0, and we'll pick 3. So let's try x equals negative 5. Uh, there's my bar here. Uh, negative 5 plus 1. That's negative 4, right? Absolute value negative 4, which is 4. Is that less than negative 3? Uh, no, it is not. So less than 4 does not work. Oh, by the way, we should use this. Yeah, they're, they're holes, right? Not included and not included. Okay, next we'll test x equals 0. So absolute value 0 plus 1 is absolute value 1, which is 1. Is that less than negative 3? No. So that doesn't work. And then we'll test x equals 3. Um, let's try 3 plus 1 is 4. And 4 is not less than 3, so no. And so since all three do not work, I say therefore the answer is no solutions. No solutions. Or if you'd like to say the empty set, you can say the empty set. And we're good. And as again, I'll point out in class, I want you to notice something. You could have known that this one wasn't going to work from the start. <laughs> um, absolute value less than a negative? Think about that. Absolute value is always positive. Always positive. Whatever is in those, it does not matter if x is negative. Whatever I put in there, it's going to be a positive number. Or it'll be zero, right? It could be zero. But either way, whether it's zero or whether it's a positive number, a positive number or zero is never going to be less than negative three. And so if I had realized that, I wouldn't have had to do all this. Okay. Uh, and so that is the check and certain things like that. So there it is. Looks pretty good. Uh, before I end the video, I do want to caution you one thing. There are some other complicated, even more complicated cases. Uh, I said that the that these could happen, right? There's also another kind, um, which would it would, looks kind of like this. Suppose I have it like this. Let's say that this is uh, zero, and let's say that this is six, right? You might get into some scenario where x is more than 6 uh, and then it doesn't work for above, above 0 or below 0. Uh, like it may only work for 6 and above. That can happen. 
So be on the lookout for that. You might have six to infinity uh, as an answer, right? As a solution set. You need to check these intervals to make sure. Okay, you can't just stop at the two cases. It's not sufficient. You have to check. It's very important that you check these. Okay, um, and yeah, that's it. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for being here. Uh, try out those homework problems. They're really good homework problems. You'll have fun with it. <laughs> have fun with the check, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys later.